We all have those days in our home where everybody's winding each other up and falling out. As soon as one argument ends, it seems another one begins. Well, on today's Mum Show, we're talking about resolving conflict. And a very warm welcome to you. My name's Marina, and today on The Mum Show, I'm joined by Becky Denharder from Care for the Family and psychotherapist Emma Brown. And today, we're getting very real about resolving conflict in our home. Okay, I'm ready for this one. We need to be honest with ourselves because, let's face it, every home enjoys some conflict from time to time. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> I actually worry when families come and say that they don't really have conflict because I think having conflict is being human, isn't it? I think we have to all admit that um, it's part of what, who we are as humans is, it to, is. is to have conflicts. It is, out. but it can be stressful. It's yeah. not always easy. And I think a general reaction to parents is we don't want it. Like, yeah. we don't want to have in a war zone. That was what my parents used to say to me all the time. It's like living in a war zone with you girls because we just fall out all the time. I have a really vivid memory of falling out with my sister in the kitchen. And I had f developed for a couple of years a, like a real terror of insects and spiders. And she was holding two tiny snails, like absolutely tiny snails. And she was teasing me. Mm -hmm. And I just erupted like completely erupted, exploded, went crazy. And instantly my mum was sort of trying to get through to me, Marina, Marina, like this. And I just kept shouting and shouting and my sister was just laughing harder and harder. And amazingly, I was shouting so loud, she threw the snail and it landed in my mouth. <gasps> no! Like, literally on my tongue. <laughs> At that. which point I just screamed the place down. And my mum like calmed me down told me to get a grip. Well, then I was just like, this is injustice. Mm. She has thrown a snail in my mouth <laughs> and I have to get a grip. <laughs> Completely fell to pieces. And I just remember it ending with me on my own in my room, just Aww. feeling like the world was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but like sometimes they can literally go from something so tiny and one person finding it funny mm. and just escalating. I mean, I don't know, have you had any big rows in your house that spring to mind? Well, I know that, again, I grew up in a, in a house full of girls. It was me and my two sisters. Um, and I was the youngest, so I was on, on a slightly less of an age gap. Um, but I remember having physical fights. Like, really? Really, really, yeah, our fights. You often assume that it's going to be boys, isn't it, that are yeah. going to get into those physical fights. But me and my sisters, yeah, it did get physical quite often. But I think... I think, you know, looking back now, it kind of just, you know, it wasn't really a big deal, but probably to my parents. And if I thought about that now as a parent, I'd be horrified. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think I think what we need to realise as parents is that it is very, very normal. Yeah. That our children are going to fight and fall out with each other. Mm. And it's almost like we need to we need to have an atmosphere in our home where actually conflict is okay. Yeah. Um, it's okay to because it's it's almost a bit like um, you know a practice ground, isn't it, for our children to practice how to fall out, how to make up, how to resolve, and that they then be they're then able to deal with conflict in the big world out outside of the home as well. Mm. Yeah, I know with my kids, they're so competitive. Like I've got two boys and they just, mm. everything's a competition. So, and it always ends in tears. So board games, you know, running down the road, I'll get them to burn off some energy and run around the park yeah. and it turns into a race and then somebody starts crying. And um, yeah, it's often, there's that element of competitiveness that causes conflict with my kids yeah. you know, all the time. And I'm competitive as well, so they've learnt it from me. But. <laughs> Siblings especially, they just, we know each other's triggers mm -hmm. and then we just play on them and compound them. Yeah. I mean, my kids, it will be, my son will be sensitive about noise. And so then my daughter will, she'll, do, she'll become like the scat man. 
and you're just like, oh, please, yeah. you know where this is going to go. And it's just, you know, they can very, very quickly erupt. And it's interesting you're saying that about um, it turning physical because growing up with girls, me and my sisters, I don't recall ever having a physical fight with them. I remember kicking her in the shins once, one of them, but I was quite old when I did that. Yeah. Um, but there was never physical fighting. It was like nastiness and mm. spiteful words and mm. taking things off of each other. And so then being a mum, when I've seen one of my children physically hurt the other, mm. I was really shocked and really mm. had to take a moment to gain perspective on it. Because in my head, it was like one child has just physically assaulted another yeah I wasn't expecting yeah. that and I think it it kind of takes me a while to process that sometimes and rationalize in my head what's actually happening in that sibling relationship yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think as parents we often want to jump in don't we and rescue I know for me I, I think I project a lot of what my wishes are for my daughter's relationship um so I you know and, and I think they tend to they, I think probably in the past I've jumped in too soon to try and resolve it for them or to, you know, to kind of help them get to that place of feeling okay again with each other. When actually I think sometimes we do need to allow them to kind of um, figure, figure things out on their own. Obviously when, when there's a power imbalance and when one child is being physically hurt by the other, yeah. then of course you need to step in. And, you know, having said what I said about me and my sisters, you know, I do think that if, you know, aggression, there's a fine line, isn't there, between that kind of play fighting um, and needing to kind of have that, have that kind of physical almost like, um, you know, completing the loop really to get to get to get to that point of resolution. That's it. Um, but there's a difference between that and, and actually really hurting each other. And I think that's obviously you do need to step in at that point. Yeah, I think it's interesting because we don't. I'm, I would never advocate, you know, allowing a child to bully another child yeah, or absolutely. saying we're okay with hitting in our family or things like that. I think it's more about our reaction to it and contextualising it in an environment of teaching yeah. as opposed to going into a place where we become dysregulated and panicked, yeah. which I know is what I could easily do. Oh, and I recall for my dad's family, they used to fall out all the time. There was like throughout the whole relatives, there was constant battle. So the message I always had as a child, you don't fall out, you be friends, you yeah. don't argue. And I remember getting to the point where I was like, what are you talking about? We are friends. Yeah. Because we didn't think those arguments were a big deal. Yeah. And my mum, who had grown up in a big family, was very relaxed mm. and kind of like, they'll argue and they'll get back up together again. But it's kind of, I guess we often talk here on The Mum Show, don't we, about <laughs> dealing and being aware of some of your own stuff before yeah. trying to resolve something that's going on with your kids. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think I grew up in a home where my parents, out of love, didn't ever fight. So they didn't argue in front of us mm. and they made that decision. And so actually, for me, I didn't see an example of, of arguing and fighting. Um, and uh, so I've kind of intentionally done that for my children, interestingly enough, because when I got married, it was quite a shock. I was like, we're fighting. I was like, married people don't fight. Yeah. So it came as quite a shock to me, which, you know, yeah. um, so we've had, I've had to learn to do that. And so for my children now, I've tried to have arguments with my husband, not hide them away, mm -hmm. but also show them the resolution so that they then understand how we resolve that conflict. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really important because yeah. I think there's, there's often, I talk about having, you know, having an opportunity to deepen a connection or deepen a relationship through the resolution of conflict. Yeah. Even in the, you know, the kind of therapy that I do, you know, um, we talk about having um, ruptures within the therapeutic relationship and how being able to kind of notice and deal kind of overtly with those ruptures um, allows for a, a much deeper therapeutic process to happen. Uh, yeah. And I think the same can be said for our, for our kind of everyday relationships. I think when we learn to tune into ourselves and figure out how what what is our conflict resolution style because I think it's very much built on our personalities mm. um, and you know I like what you're saying Becky because actually I grew up in a household where everything was expressed very loudly and it was high expressed emotion um, and so I didn't I'm not really that afraid of conflict um, whereas you know meeting my husband 
he didn't res they, they didn't resolve conflict in his house very well at all um, and it wasn't really done and so we you know we really had to work hard at figuring out how to how to do conflict well <laughs> um, and I think that's really important yeah. for us as adults to really tune into like you say figure out what our own childhood styles were of yeah. how was how was conflict resolved in our in our houses growing up and then think about how that impacts on our on our families today so we talking about modeling then mm. sort of like resolving con conflict and helping our children process that but what would you say are good ways of resolving conflict in comparison to what are some of the ways we might settle into in our kind of subconscious or, or bad habits yeah I think it's difficult to think about it in terms of good and bad resolving conflict. Obviously, it, because I think it, it really comes down to being able to regu regulate yourself in those moments. Because when we're in conflict, we're, it's often because we feel attacked. And we feel, you know, and, and we've, we've talked about the physical kind of versus the verbal, but even the verbal attacks, it can, it can trigger our fight or flight response. And it yeah. can almost feel the same. Our bodies respond in the same way as if we were being physically attacked. And so our tendency is to fight. So to kind of put on our armor and attack back or to flight, which is the retreat or withdraw. Mm. And I think we tend to do one or the other in mm. most cases. Um, so I think the one, one of the main things is to really figure that out first. And in those moments when we're feeling triggered, when we're feeling attacked, just take a pause, take a kind of a, a, a moment to kind of think, why am I feeling like this? OK, I'm, just, I'm feeling attacked. I'm, f I'm feeling in that fight or flight mode. How do I get back to that place of calm before I then... It's that kind of, um, you know, trying to regulate. We've talked about regulation before relate and then reflect. It's that, mm. that's that kind of process of resolving conflict as we go through. You've got those reactions, haven't you? So you can be yeah. aggressive mm. or you can be passive aggressive, which is even worse because you yeah. sit there and not say anything about the, yeah. you know, about yeah. the actual conflict and it just grows and grows inside you, doesn't it? Yeah. And then, or you can be completely passive and just say, oh, it, you know, I'm not going to let this bother me. And, yeah. and actually finding a healthy way of, yeah. reacting in those situations is quite is quite a challenge isn't it yeah but I think I, when you start seeing it you can you can figure out okay yeah. taking that pause I find quite hard actually because I'm really quite hard. a reaction I, I react quite strongly mm. you know I've probably more of the aggressive side where I'm like no you can't do that or like <laughs> don't say that about me you know um, so I think it's quite hard for some people to mm. take that pause yeah how do you do that it is how? well I, I actually think it's really important to to kind of almost when you're in that moment, assume that you're the one that needs to take the responsibility. So almost you're almost kind of assuming that you're the one that has more of a, an awareness of what's going on. So and if you and if you're so it's say if it's you and your partner or particularly if it's you and your child, you've got to be able to be the one that's um, acknowledging and tuning in because you can't assume the other person is going to be able to do that. Mm. Um, and, and it's doing the things that work for you. So if you know that actually when you're feeling triggered, you're, you really need to resolve that conflict and you're, you're going to be like a dog with a bone, then it's like trying to do the opposite. It's trying to take a step back and go and take some you know, time out, uh, as we've talked about for the parent, before you go back and, and, and tackle it. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's knowing what almost our automatic default setting is when we're in a place of chaos yeah. inside and then kind of strategizing what works better. So if you're somebody that's going to kind of keep badgering, then it's trying to figure out a way to, you know, work it into a healthy way, isn't it? Because it can be good yeah. to take mm -hmm. some space and it can be good to be someone that wants to resolve. Yeah. I know that if I'm with my husband and we were to have an argument about something, then I want it resolved. Mm -hmm. I want it finished and I want us moving on. Yeah. And I find it hard to find peace until yeah. something's resolved. My husband will want space yeah. so that he can think and he can process something. And so at the beginning, that's kind of like, you're walking out on me. This is terrible. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, and it all escalates. But the minute you have that conversation that says, it helps me mm -hmm. if when you find space, you can still pick up your phone mm -hmm. and let me know where you are. Mm -hmm. Because then I know that that you're safe that we're cool that everything's going to come back and we can resolve this soon yeah. and he's like it helps me if i'm allowed to just go and take a few minutes thinking clearing my thoughts and then we can come and do it and i guess 
being able to pass that on to our children mm -hmm. and getting curious mm -hmm. about them, you know, noticing, you know, you see when you get very stressed, I notice you often go to your room and slam your door yeah. and helping them find a productive mm -hmm. way of doing that. Because we can't, I guess we can't disrespect what people need at the time, mm -hmm. but we need to find a way of making it positive. Yeah, I think what you were saying about, about you and your husband, um, it's really important and I think using I statements so instead of going to that kind of attack mode of you do this or you make me feel like this when you do that it's it's you own it yourself so I feel really rejected when you walk out the room when I'm trying to talk to you so you're you're holding that sense of responsibility so I statements are a really good mm. kind of, you know kind of technique if you want really to just to begin with so make sure when you're when you're approaching that kind of trying to re resolve it Keep, keep holding that responsibility for yourself because the other person can't argue with your feelings if you're owning yeah. them yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's one strategy. And I think if you, we can model that with our children, that's really helpful. So you helpful. can help them in that process, yeah. can't you? So I know with my kids, I'll come alongside them and try and help them to see how the other person's feeling, how they're feeling and mm. talk it through with them. And knowing the time to do that as well, because if they're really angry and they have mm. got, you know, they're so wound up and, and can't get that rational brain engaged, yeah. then um, actually just helping them to calm down first and helping them to process it a little bit later. Mm. I think I always want it sorted out now. You yeah, know, same here. With, between my children, I'm like, yeah. but you've, got to, you've got to make up and you've just got to crack on with the rest of the day because mm. we want to have peace. Yeah. Um, but actually, um, they might need that space. And yeah. again, that's recognising how they deal with conflict, isn't it? Mm. If they, do they need to calm down and take time yeah. out and be away from the situation for a little while before they resolve it? Mm. Or one of them might need space yeah. and the other one is really struggling with space yeah. and needs to resolve <laughs> it. So it's helping them, like you say, with that kind of empathy of perspective taking. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the three pillars of that emotional intelligence. It's the kind of being a, being self-aware and knowing what it is that we're feeling and why we're feeling it. It's then being able to see, you know, put yourself in somebody else's shoes and being able to see it from their perspective. And then it's been also been able to move through those feelings and regulate yourself. So those are the three parts mm. that I think in terms of um, co resolving conflict is really helpful for our children to kind of learn as well. Yeah. We've got a, a great video from um, Mimi Josiah and their mum, Sarah, and they're just talking about some of the strategies they do to cool things down when everybody's feeling a little bit wound up. So here we are. Please do meet the Malangas. Hi, we're the Malanga family. We're going to share some tips with you today about how to make up after a fight and how to keep the peace in your family. Tip one is... Tip one is don't take it out on someone but something. We use quite a few different things in our house. We use the punch bag. We use pillows. And I use the basketball. And sometimes I play with my Nerf guns and shoot blocks. Tip two, have a good old play fight with rolling around on the floor together in their bedrooms, having a wrestling match, and there's lots of screaming. And I'm not gonna lie, I usually panic a little bit when I see these wrestling matches going on but I, I now realise that they're so necessary. They're not only a bonding exercise, lovely bonding exercise, but also it's a way of releasing that pent up anger and frustration that we all are possibly carrying and we don't know we are. So when the storm comes, we're a lot more calmer to deal with it. Tip three, a big group hug. Something so simple, but can be really, really hard. When you're angry at each other, it's the last thing you want to do. Try and bite your tongue and do it. It's so much more powerful than words sometimes. Our children push us together when we don't want to hug each other. And I'm so glad we did it in the end. And everything seems a lot easier to resolve once you've had that hug. Tip number four, give each other some space. Jabs likes to have a power nap on the sofa and watch a good movie on his own. Josiah likes to go out and jump on the trampoline and play a bit of basketball. Mimi goes upstairs and plays Teddy School. And I like to sit down with a cup of tea and read a good book and not be bothered. And if you give each other that little bit of space that we all need, then we're less likely to get on each other's nerves. Tip number five, always be a team. Show some loyalty towards each other. The conflict might not necessarily be somebody's fault. It might be something. So your washing machine might break and you're all stood around arguing at each other. It's nobody's fault, it's the washing machine. And last but not least, work it out together and not against each other. Bye. Bye.
<laughs> 10 out of 10 yeah. for having cute kids. Oh, absolutely. There's some good tips yeah, there as really well. Good. Really good. I, lo I like, actually, it goes back to the kind of play fighting bit. Actually, sometimes I think, as, particularly as mums, we it does worry us, doesn't it, when we see our kids fighting. But actually, that play fighting, it is really important. That physical bit, um, it, it's, it's so important to get rid of some of that pent-up emotion. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Making sure that in the day, there's plenty of opportunities to get all your roar out yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. quite important isn't it yeah, yeah. it's moving it we, there's a phrase called move it don't lose it so if you're feeling yourself becoming a bit dysregulated you know get up or, or get your children up to, to do, you know run around the garden or do 10 star jumps or some push-ups <laughs> who can do uh, the most push-ups in uh, in anyone sitting that sort of thing that's brilliant because it's yeah. stopping it before you kind of yeah get to that point where it's it all blows up. See tensions yeah, rising. Yeah, yeah. I know we talk about an anger river where you do you do what you can. You notice your stresses and your mm. triggers before you fall in the river. Um, oh. But if you do fall in the river where you're you're in an argument or something, then you want to stop and try and get to the riverbank as quickly as possible before mm. you really lose it. Yeah. And actually um, yeah. finding ways to get out beforehand. I loved yeah. what they said about the space. Because actually taking some space as a family, you can be on top of each other a lot, can't mm, you, mm. in your house? Or um, yeah. And actually, if you know that you are feeling that way and getting that little bit of space, I think that's brilliant because yeah. that helps you, you avoid that kind yeah. of getting to that point where it really blows up. Absolutely. Because I think prevention is quite helpful in that I find sometimes in our home, you can develop a habit of falling out or a habit of just being grumpy with each other, or a habit of, you know, and sometimes I'm like, okay, let's all just remember we love each other yeah. and start from there. Everyone's nice, everyone loves each other, <laughs> and we'll start from there. Because sometimes you just get like a, people just, they're just a bit narky, they're just a bit cross, and you want to break that habit, don't you? And if you can preempt a bad mood and a bad fallout and change it before it gets there. That in itself is teaching, isn't it? It's yes. teaching your brain to be aware of what you need to do and, and how to avoid unnecessary conflict. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether it'd be helpful to do the hand model of the brain. Yeah, actually. absolutely. Because um, sometimes this could be a really way, good way of helping children understand what happens when they fall out or what happens when they get triggered. So we've got the, we've got here, we've got your handy model of the brain, which is really handy because you take your hand around with you all the time. So if you've got your spinal cord and your body here, explain to your child that this is, this is their body. Here is their brain stem. That's the bottom bit of their brain. That's what kind of uh, regulates their temperature and that very basic fight or flight response. And then their inside brain, they've got their midbrain, which is called the limbic system, but that's where all their emotions are, um, are contained in this, brain, in this part of the brain and their ability to relate to each other. And then there's this top bit, which is the ability to kind of think, to reason, to empathise, all the kind of higher order brain stuff. But what happens is that when, we're, when somebody says something, so if a sibling kind of, you know, winds another sibling up, it, this part of the brain, it's like it comes offline and we call it flipping your lid, kind of comes up. And so all the child is functioning really from this middle part of the brain. So it's like a, like a fire alarm going off. Um, and they very, feel very, very emotional, very dysregulated. And this part of the brain, it's like they can't access it. So they need help. They need to think about how do I get my brain back online? How do I kind of put my lid back on? And it's helping children to understand that's what's happening yeah. uh, and what do they need to do to bring themselves back on time? Do you need to go and kind of have some space? Do you need to go and run around the garden? What is it that you need to do to kind of help get your lids back on? Mm. It's just a really kind of, kind of handy but visual way of, of helping yeah. children see that they've got some bit, bit more control over themselves as well. That's really good. I processed that with my daughter when she was, I think must have been about for and it really empowered her not to feel bad about the conflict right. because I think she yes. felt one of the things she struggled with is mm. I really love my brother yeah. he's really wonderful but I'm so angry right now and trying to deal with that guilt of having an argument mm -hmm. and especially because she's feisty yeah she's always going to be feisty it's just mm -hmm. who she is um so for her to realize that actually learn the power of what's going on in her mind and how to stop that yeah. before she loses it altogether, just seemed to detach her a little bit from feeling as though she was unstoppable in her rage or, you know, she had no control over this. And she found that really empowering and helpful. And she must have been four or five yeah. at the time. But sometimes I guess yeah. it's such a big 
thing when our kids feel over the top and emotional. And I think the rage you can feel towards a sibling matches the absolute love and adoration you can yeah. feel. Yeah. I mean, it's second to none, isn't it? I've never yeah. fallen out with anyone like I can have the potential to fall out with my sisters. Yeah. You know, and it can be so quick and easy that everybody winds each other up. And sometimes it's just really nice to understand what's happening and to just have that confidence that you're okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah definitely. Once, they've, they've, once they're learning to deal with the conflict a bit more themselves, then hopefully... It, it's the, the less you have to intervene as well. Mm. and Because it can be quite hard, I think, when you're tired or you're stressed. I know I don't handle things well mm. in those situations. And I just jump in. I'm like, just stop it, you know. And don't and, you and find... I was like, oh, no, I haven't done this right. <laughs> but don't you find at that point that then you're in conflict with them too? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's what happens to me. I'm trying to settle a conflict, but now I'm involved yeah. in the argument. <laughs> I haven't resolved anything. I've just joined in. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, I'm... Um, my emotions get involved then as well and your it, everybody's a whole bowl of thing yeah everybody's lit to flip and actually <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, and it, it and then that then it comes down to okay you need to take responsibility who's the adult in the situation mm -hmm. and it's your responsibility to put your lids back on before you can even begin to help your children yeah. put their lids back on yeah. um yeah and yeah. i think it's the other the other another important thing that that's often happened and particularly in our household that we've had to learn is not letting things fester yeah so often um i think um sarah said in the video there about sometimes it's the little things or the kind of things that you know everything gets located in the dishwasher or the or yeah. the washing machine but actually if we I think if things do bother us or if things are coming up it's trying to deal with them in the moment rather than avoiding the conflict because I think if we push it down push it down then we tend to flip our lids over something that feels very irrational then yeah. but actually it's not about the dishwasher it's about you know the, the last two weeks of all the little things that you've just kind of pushed down so I think we need to teach our children actually it's okay to have a disagreement yeah. and to, to kind of air our feelings and air kind of, I feel, you know, I feel really disappointed that you've just done that or, uh, you know, all those sorts of things. I think we sometimes, we sacrifice dealing with the things in the here and now to just to keep, for the sake of keeping yeah. the peace when actually, you know, that's not teaching our children how to deal with conflict in the right way. And it's not actually peace, is it? It's no. just quiet. Exactly. And peace and quiet are very, very different. Absolutely, yeah. I always remember my mum telling me that she, her, in her, her parents never argued at all, but the atmosphere in the house was horrific a lot of the time. Yeah. So it would be like walking on eggshells, but nobody would say anything. So the conflict wasn't there, but actually the conflict mm. was there. It just wasn't seen. Uh, and I think that for, for children can be equally, if not more, scary uh, I yeah. think children can feel even more insecure when there's a really bad atmosphere mm. so I think I like what you were saying earlier Becky about actually intentionally okay we can, it's okay to have an argument and, sh and do that in front of the child so that they can see how to resolve it. that you know actually mummy and daddy can fall out but it's not the end of the world and things can be resolved mm. so we can have quite an idyllic view of of, of our families, what we want them to look like. Yeah. So, you know, I picture, especially at Christmas, for example, yeah. <laughs> oh, it would be so nice if we all just got on and had a lovely mm. time together. But that isn't always, it's yeah, not realistic, is it? No. It's not. No. We've got wrong expectations if we think that there's never going to be conflict. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we just want to have those things in place, don't we, to be able to give us the confidence to deal with it and not run away from it. And, and of course, we always have more time than we think we have, mm -hmm. I think anyway. Like, you know, quite often we want to rush to solve something, mm -hmm. but it is okay for everyone to pause yeah. and come yeah. back once we've calmed ourselves down. Yeah. Let's all take a moment yeah. and then be able to move forward together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank Thanks you so you. much, both of you, for coming and sharing your wisdom with me. I always appreciate a good bit of wisdom, especially about conflict. So thank you so much. And thank you too for joining us today. Don't forget you can stay up to date with the happenings of The Mum Show by following the website below. And we'll look forward to seeing you again.